Hello everyone, Drea here to give you some information about how to add some dimension to your gingerbread house project. Now I have some unique materials here, and of course I have my hoop loaded with tearaway, just like you'll see in the tutorial. But my unique materials here are a felt base fabric. So we're using an acrylic blend felt as our base fabric and our back. That'll give it that gingerbread look and feel. This project also features high loft batting. So high loft batting is a little thicker. Um, it has some nice extra loft to it, and it's really easy to work with in order to get a little extra structure and oomph to your project. And this project also features puffy foam. Now this is a specific type of foam that is meant to be embroidered with. This is similar to uh, the type of material you would put under the logo for a hat, and it gives some extra dimension. The satin stitches in this gingerbread project are special in that they have a different density and thickness to where the puffy foam goes right under, and I can't wait to show you just how adorable these little dimensional projects are. So let's get started stitching one out. I have my tearaway stabilizer hooped, and the first thing I'll do is run my placement stitch. You can see here that the placement stitch gives you the overall size of the project. This adorable little ornament is nice and easy to work with. So then I'll place my base fabric, which is my felt, over the top of this placement stitch. Now our felt is reversible, so it doesn't matter which side but you'll wanna place it face up if you're using a fabric that has some print. Go ahead and tack that down. Now, once your base fabric is tacked, everything looks nice and normal. Before this next step, which will have all your decorative elements here, it'll create the icing portion of your design, you'll want to go ahead and place your puffy foam. So I have a relatively small sheet here. I'm just gonna cover the entire design. You don't need quite this much, but a little extra can't hurt. Covering the entire design, and then make sure that your thread color is the color that you want to show up on top of your design. We like this white iced look, so I'll be changing to a white thread. It's important to remember with puffy foam, if you used a color here, like red or something else, it could very well show through. So make sure to match your puffy foam to your thread color. This is going to give that extra dimension to your cookie and really make it look like it's raising and popping up off your stitch out. So again, I just placed my puffy foam over the top of the entire design. And this should be done right before the satin stitches, right before those really cute decorative elements that we want to be raised. Then you just simply run the next machine step, which is a satin stitch. Once the satin stitches have completed over your puffy foam, you're ready to go ahead and remove the puffy foam from your hoop. To remove the puffy foam, you can either use your fingers or tweezers, whichever is easiest, and you simply tear it away. Be careful to not pull your design out of the hoop just yet. You just want to remove the puffy foam. Remember to get the smaller sections as well. Once your puffy foam is removed from the front, you'll notice that your satin stitches are absolutely adorable and raised. If you have any little fuzzies remaining, I'll show you how to get rid of those at the very end. For now, let's continue with our ornament. Return the hoop to the machine. And this design specifically has some extra really small dots here. These are a little too small for puffy foam, so you'll see that they have their own embroidery step. Go ahead and run that step now. Your design may have these or may not. Be sure to follow the machine steps indicated in the tutorial. Once your design elements are complete, go ahead and remove your hoop from the machine very carefully. And then we will turn over to the back. On the back of the hoop, you'll place your piece of high loft batting. 
right on top of the design, making sure to cover everything fully. You'll definitely want some tape or spray adhesive for this step to make sure that your batting is completely adhered to the back of the hoop. Since this batting is high loft and a little fluffy, you might want to use a little extra tape to make sure it's secured in place. Once that's ready, turn your hoop over and put it back in the machine. Next, you're ready to run the tacking stitch. This is a special tacking stitch for the high loft batting. And so you'll see a little more movement than you might be used to for a regular tacking. This is to ensure that the high loft batting is tamped down properly and your presser foot and machine won't have any trouble. Again, this color doesn't really matter. So we're going to go ahead and continue with our tacking for the high loft batting. Here's that movement that I was talking about. It'll do a few stitches and move over and then repeat that process. This is intentional within the digitizing to ensure that the high loft batting is secured, but still maintains its robustness and its shape. That way your design is gonna be nice and fluffy. You'll see once the spot tack has completed, the step finishes with a traditional tack Now that your high loft batting is secured, go ahead and again remove the hoop and we'll turn over to trim away any excess. You'll just trim up to these tacking lines. Go ahead and remove your tape. And we can use this again in our next couple of steps. Be careful when you trim that you don't cut your stabilizer. Just remove any excess high loft batting. Once your high loft batting is trimmed, you should be able to see your original placement stitch and the shape of your overall design. This next step is optional, but we feel that it turns your design into an ornament. So you'll take a length of ribbon, about six or eight inches, loop it in half, and go ahead and place the loop side up with the end secured tightly inside. Make sure you tape this in place. Then you're ready to add your back fabric on top. Again, we're using felt that doesn't have a right side or wrong side, but if you had printed fabric, you'd wanna make sure that it was print side up at this point. So go ahead and cover the entirety of your design. Make sure your piece is large enough and tape everything in place. Make sure your tape is secured to the stabilizer on all sides and that your ribbon is taped down. Once that's all secured, you're ready to return your hoop to the machine. You'll run the next to last step, which is a tacking stitch to attach your back fabric, and it will also attach your ribbon. Once that's completed, you have your final machine step, which is this candle wicking stitch that will cover up your spot tack. We've chosen to run this stitch in off-white that matches our icing, but you could use any color you choose. Go ahead and run that step as well. You can see while this candle wicking stitch is running that it's covering up all those spot tacks. That way everything is nice and tidy. And because of the shape of the stitching, everything still has a good puffy loft to it. Now that your candle wicking is complete, your design is finished. Should look something like this. You can see the beautiful candle wicking accents cover up all the tacking. And we'll use this outer edge here as our trim line. Go ahead and remove your design from the hoop. Then you can tear away any stabilizer. I like to remove the stabilizer first so I can clearly see where my ribbon is. Then you're ready to trim around your ornament. So we'll trim away all this tape and excess fabric using this stitch line as a guide. It's gonna go from chaos to absolutely adorable, three-dimensional, super cute ornament. Let's grab our scissors and make it happen. 
Remember when you're trimming to pause for your ribbon. I like to cut right on top of those stitches that are on the outside. That way they'll come out easily and I can use them as a symmetrical guide to make sure my ornament has a good edge. Can clean up any spots that you may have missed. Remember to watch that ribbon so you don't cut it off. And then any stitching that's left, you can casually trim off or take it out with a seam ripper. Once you've trimmed your ornament, everything is good to go and ready for hanging. Now, if you have any little extra pieces of puffy foam that are peeking through, you can remedy this by taking an iron. Don't touch it to your ornament, but just hover over, give it a little steam, and that puffy foam will shrink right into the stitches, giving it a nice clean look. Your ornament's ready to go, ready to hang. Thanks for joining in with me as we use some special materials to create a dimensional gingerbread ornament. Catch you next time.